What is going on, Cover One crew? Welcome back to the show. Hope everybody's doing great out there as per usual. We made it. It is the fantasy football playoffs. And, I mean, get ready. It's it's not a lot left on the waiver wire, so that, of course, is what we're doing. Week number 15, waiver wire must add players. And instead of going through the entire list of people to stash on your bench, it's one in and one out. That's all we got left. So I got you covered if you need some extra oomph this week to get you through to the next round. So let's dive in and waste no more time. So what is the rule of thumb as we enter the fantasy football playoffs that I always and continuously will preach is start your studs, start the players you drafted, start the players that got you in the position to be in the fantasy playoffs. However, I mean, there are players we could grab off this waiver wire, but it is pick clean in the running back room. There's only three on my board that are viable options that we could start here in the fantasy playoffs in round one. And first one on my board is uh, Bam Knight from the New York Jets, 56% ownership. Yes, it's a little higher than the 50% uh, 50 threshold that we typically talk about, but he is available in certain leagues and he will be a uh, viable play once again this week. He's got 40.8 points so far on the season in relief as he's taken over over when Michael Carter went down. Carter came back from his injury versus the Buffalo Bills and Bam Knight still took a lion's share of the volume and that should continue as we move forward. Jarek McKinnon, he is still on my board. He's been on my board for a while. Told you guys the last few weeks that he was going to be PPR upside player for you in a potential flex opportunity. Now it is, uh, it's completely viable. In this Kansas City uh, Chiefs offense, like we said, there's so many options to be had, so many ways that Patrick Mahomes can spread the ball. Now they're seeing the Pacheco and McKinnon backfield. That is a one-two split. We're seeing a lot more checkdowns going to the running back. Mahomes is giving or taking what the defense has given him a lot of the time as well, and McKinnon is typically that guy. So he will still have a very good ceiling for you entering the fantasy playoffs, and he will be a viable flex option for you this week. 47.8% ownership, almost 100 points, 99.1 uh, points in half PPR leagues. You got to love what Jerk McKinnon is doing for you. It's, it's, it's 10, 11, 12 points per week. You can't hate that type of production, especially in uh, week number 15. Chuba Hubbard is my only other running back as a notable addition. 25.8 ownership rate, 45 points right now. He's looked good the last two weeks. This coaching staff in Wilkes, they're starting to utilize both running backs more in a 50-50 type of split. We're seeing a lot more explosive ability from a Chuba Hubbard than we are seeing from a Deontay Foreman right now and that could continue but again this is a one the, one of these backfields now gonna still be very difficult for me to trust can you play both it's very possible that you can play uh, one one team would start forming you're not playing both running backs on the same team is not what I'm trying to say but you can play uh you know and and hope uh, in the split backfield that Chuba is gonna at least continue his ascension and continue to give you point production it's still very hard to trust for me I like Bam Knight I like McKinnon over a Chuba Hubbard this week off the waiver wire so Hopefully you guys have a, a, a deep running back room on your roster at this point. Quarterbacks, we got Brock Purdy. He looked a little bit purdy this week, destroying and dismantling Tom Brady's Buccaneers. 8.2% ownership. Kyle Shannon is just the master. We've seen it how many times. Doesn't matter who's playing quarterback. He simplifies the entire playbook for the quarterback position, and they're able to produce. Yes, they got a boatload of talent on this offense. No Debo Samuel now one to three weeks with an MCL sprain. So I mean, they're going to have to uh, lean and rely on CMC that much more. George Kittle's going to get back in the mix. Uh, Brandon Ayuk is likely going to get number one wide receiver target share at this point. They still got Jennings in support. There are weapons on this San Francisco 49ers team that will still continue to, you know, pro, uh, promote a good uh, floor for a Brock Purdy. 38.9% or 38.9 points, excuse me, so far this uh, season since taking over for Jimmy G. And they're going up against the Seattle Seahawks this week, so it is a very good match up versus a defense that does like to hemorrhage points through the air. Mike White is another quarterback that we can absolutely look to stream this
this week once again. He's playing those Detroit Lions who also give up a boatload of productivity through the air on the defensive back end. 17.7% ownership. Yes, he did not look good versus the Buffalo Bills this past week. It was sloppy conditions. He was just getting manhandled by that Buffalo Bills defensive line. Yes, the Lions do have a line that can get after the quarterback in Aiden Hutchinson and company, but there is potential that Garrett Wilson could have a a monumental day fantasy football wise versus the Detroit Lions something like uh, you know uh, uh, JJ had this past week going over 200 yards so definitely Mike White is on the radar for your streaming services once again this week Russell Wilson does find his way back as a notable streaming quarterback 44.6% ownership rate he did he did look a lot better the best we've seen him all season long this past week finally went back to the well found Jerry Judy three times in the end zone Yes, he did get a concussion. It's it's let's ride to the concussion room, and hopefully he's going to, you know, clear concussion protocol. That bump on his head didn't look good. It was no joke, so, you know, hopefully he's going to be doing all right, a kid, but it's uh, hopefully his health is going to be good for this week. It is a little bit riskier than other quarterbacks to start a Russell Wilson, but if he can give you a 29-point threshold, I mean, that's something that will carry you into round, uh, round number two in the fantasy playoffs. Tyler Heineke, he is 12.8% ownership coming off the bye week, facing those New York Giants once again. And if you're looking for safety valves, if you're looking for the safety net of 12 to 15 points from your quarterback, that's likely what you're going to get from the floor from a Heineke. He is able to get you over 20 points. Now he's starting to spread the ball around that much more. Terry was his number one target, but now we're seeing Curtis Samuel before that he went into the bye week. Curtis Samuel and Jahan Dotson, all three men uh, uh, boomed this past week, uh, the week before, I should say. And I mean, so that just tells me that he's feeling a little bit more comfortable. He's able to spread the ball around to his wide receivers, so it is very good in that respect. Heineke is a good streaming option. Baker Mayfield does uh, creep up on the board once again for a, you know, fantasy uh, relative you know, production. Uh, we saw what he was able to do versus those Raiders late and I mean, okay, are, are we going to trust it? It's just if you're in a pinch in deeper leagues, you're looking for a quarterback to play. Baker Mayfield might be able to do something for you. He's going up against the Green Bay Packers, so it should be a lot, uh, you know, more difficult even though he will have an extra week of preparation than coming off, you know, the plane and then basically suiting up and starting for these LA Rams. Wide receivers, we still got a lot of good talent to discuss on the waiver wire. DJ Chark, like I told y'all last week, two weeks in a row, I told y'all to go pick up DJ Chark and that he was going to be a safe play, reliable play. He is once again this week as well. 58.6 points for a DJ Chark. He is, I mean, there's just a lot of weapons on this Detroit uh, offense at the moment. Jamison Williams comes back, scores a touchdown. DJ Chark finds his way. I mean, this offense looks very, very capable and very good to move the ball all over the field to all of their stud wide receivers so DJ Chark to me is a very safe flex play this week you can absolutely trust more from the Houston Texans wide receiver 1.9% ownership but he's got almost 80 fantasy points and this one's a caveat I'm going to put on it if, if Brandon Cooks does not suit up again this week yes you can absolutely trust a Chris Moore he is just balling when it comes to PPR upside and hopefully that Brandon Cooks won't suit up for fantasy purposes because Chris Moore has just been very very good on the field so I would pick up a Chris Moore. I would buck the trend in this one. Keep him on the bench and wait and see if a Brandon Cooks and a Nico Collins do sit out once again because then he will be the top target once again in this Houston Texans offense. Jahan Dotson is still on the board, man. 20.9%. He's got 64 points this year. He lost a little bit of traction due to injury. Now, we, like we said, look, coming off the bye week, yes, Carson Wentz is coming back. Is that going to be a problem for Tyler Haneke? We'll see how that does go. But uh, John Dotson is one of these wide receivers that if you are stuck in a pinch and you need high upside, he is definitely one that can find the end zone for you, get you 12, 15 points on any given Sunday. John Dotson is my guy. Jar Jarvis Landry, 23% ownership coming off the bye week as well. Still gives you relatively decent PPR upside, even though the this, uh, you know, New Orleans Saints offense has not been great, so I would temper the expectations on what you're going to get from a Landry, but if there is upside, there is a, you know, a good matchup play, there is some PPR upside for a Jarvis Landry. Jamison Williams, high risk, high reward at this point. He got the one target, I believe, two targets, but he did score the touchdown, got you 10 points. Not enough, but they wanted to see what they could, uh, you know, do with him on the field. Clearly the field stretcher, blown coverage. He found his way into the end zone. They're going to start opening up the floodgates a little bit because he is that field burn. He is a mismatch on the field. He will likely score another touchdown this week as they go because, I mean, you got to see what you got in this rookie. He is a superstar, all-star talent in the making potential-wise, so watch out for Jamison Williams. Richie James, he is becoming a PPR good player 
play every single week. Daniel Jones does find him on the regular. 67 points. He did save his fantasy day with a touchdown. That's kind of where the floor rests for Richie James. If he does not find the end zone, you could be stuck anywhere from five to eight points, which could hurt your team overall. Decent flex play if he does find the end zone. Romeo Dobbs is likely coming back from injury, so we'll see what the, uh, the great play of Christian Watson. We'll see if, you know, Dobbs takes a back, uh, back seat. So I would say keep him on the notable list. If you make it to the next round of the playoffs, Dobbs could be a player that we're looking to for flex appeal. Finishing it off with tight ends. What did I tell y'all about Evan Ingram? Hope y'all listen. I told y'all to go pick him up. I told y'all to start him this past week. He was going to be a good, safe play. I didn't expect him to score 30-plus points. But he would, if that if he listened, that's what he did for you. And, I mean, he probably got you into the playoffs if you were struggling. 50.2% ownership right now, 107 points. And he has uh, catapulted his rank on the tight end uh, you know, rankings right now. And it's a very safe play. Trevor Lawrence is looking a lot better, more sharp on the field. He is taking the tutelage from his head coach. He does look now like the first overall pick we all expected him to be. And Evan Ingram is a big part of this offensive weapon that they do use. So there could be potential. Potential. Again, at least the target share has been there all year for an Ingram, but now he's finding his way into the end zone. Now the yardage is starting to creep up. He was just an absolute mismatch versus Tennessee Titans this past week. Tyler Conklin, once again, is back on my board. Safety blanket, safety option, check down option for a Mike White. There is, uh, you know, relatively 7 to 10 points for this tight end every single week. Now it is Garrett Wilson, number one. Now Corey Davis dealing with a concussion of his own. He may not suit up this week, so Conklin would definitely rise up my board in that respect also even though they do got Elijah Moore they just don't feed the man the ball so it is Conklin it's Garrett Wilson then it's Conklin for me so Conklin would see a heavy dose of PPR upside Hayden Hurst is a very interesting one if he does come back from that calf injury he is day to day on that calf injury watch out for that because T Higgins did not play this past week after uh, you know tweaking his hammy and he didn't even play the entire game and Tyler Boyd is gone for one to three weeks target share will be abundant for a Hayden Hurst no kidding in this offense with Joey be Jamar Chase obviously he's gonna you know eat up everything that comes his way but they're gonna need a secondary piece and Hurst is that guy man Tennessee's tight end I'm not even gonna try to you know pronounce his name Okowakawana I can't do it see I'm sorry sir that is not okay 56.1 points 8.8 percent ownership rate for okay OKO, we'll just call him OKO because, I mean, I struggle with names at some times. But, I mean, this guy has a very good talent, very good athletic ability, found his way into the end zone this past week. And if they continue to utilize this man, it, uh, you know, play action pass, there's not a lot of options from the tight end spot. Austin Hooper has not done well this year with Tennessee. So maybe OKO can do some damage for you. There is still heavy risk because the Titans don't pass the ball a lot with Ryan Tannehill. Jelani Woods, 1.5% ownership, but he does look like he's taken over the tight end one spot in this offense now in Indianapolis Matt Ryan has looked in his direction quite a bit the past several weeks so there is potential very much high risk high reward boomer bust you can get zero points you could get yourself uh, you know 12 points if he finds the end zone very much high upside risk high reward for a Jelani Woods Foster Moreau still on the list but there is a caveat on this one as well as uh, uh, Walker is uh, coming back or Darren Waller excuse me is coming back uh, potentially from injury they're saying he should be ready and good to go for week 15 so watch the injury report if he does not then Moreau could uh, definitely be another streaming tight end for you in that sense and Atlanta's a uh, Pruitt to McCole Pruitt it's a reach I get it but I mean if you're in deeper leagues and you're struggling now we got Desmond Ritter that's why I got Pruitt on the list right now he's got 26 points in relief of a Kyle Pitts since Pitts went down but we got uh, Desmond Ritter. He is the starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons now. So he's going to be looking for the safety blanket, the check down, the safe reads. And that is going to be the tight end option. So we'll see. It's a, it, I would not start it this week. Just putting him on the list for us to you know pay attention to. But if you guys want other options, there are. Ingram, Conklin, Hurst are my top three tight ends this week to stream for uh, the round one of the fantasy football playoffs. So there you have it. That is week number 15, waiver wire additions, must add players. We are in the playoffs it's a die, a ride or die, you know, win or go home. You got to do it, man. So we're going to get those trophies as, as best as we possibly can. And stay with me. I got you covered for the rest of the week for start, sit, lineup advice. So definitely follow me through and I'll get you that trophy. But nevertheless, as always, don't forget to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, jump in those comments, give me your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. I am out. <laughs>